There's no one to encourage my soul, Lord, then your speed. pastor of St. John Baptist Church in Columbia, Maryland, and today is our Youth Sunday. So we get to celebrate our youth all day long during our service. I remember when I was a young person, I used to hear parents and adults say all the time that youth are the church of tomorrow. Well, I'm standing here to let all of our youth know that there is a place in our church for you today. And so since we can't bring and go gather today for worship in the church house, we're going to bring God's house into your house. And so don't sit back, but sit up and get engaged because you're not going to get out of this service anything more than you put into it. So let's get ready for worship. Come on, let's lift this morning hymn, hymn 
291, glory to his name. Come on, we're going to do just that today. We're going to give God glory, honor, and praise this morning. Come on, put your hands together at home. Let's lift him up. Hallelujah. Come on, let's take it from the top down at the cross. Come on, say it. Down. Hi, family. Welcome to Fourth Sunday Worship Experience here, St. John Baptist Church. I'm Reverend John West, and it is my proud privilege to welcome you to our service today. We hope you find the service to be rewarding. As if you're a first time guest, hey, we love you. We welcome. Don't don't let make this your last time. If you're a returning guest, this is what I want you to do: hit that share button right now. Hit that share button. Let, say St. John is on. St. John is on and popping. On, on the virtual channel with St. John Baptist Church. Come on, let's join them together and let's lift up the name of Jesus together. We love you. We can't be with you, but we miss you. And now we have this opportunity to worship him together virtually. Come on, hit the share button, hit some good comments, and let's worship together. Mwah.
Hey, St. John, this is Reverend West again. Want to give you some updates on some things that are happening here at St. John Baptist Church. Even though the doors are closed, we're still shaking and baking. Still moving and grooving. Got some things to do. Uh, gentle yoga via Zoom is still going on on Tuesdays and Thursdays this week at noon. Come on and get your yoga on. The men of St. John are hosting an event on July the 8th at 8 p.m. Check this out. It's via Zoom. And look at this title. Armored men coming together doing turbulent times. Ugh! I know that's going to be exciting. The Zoom login information is on our website. It's www.stjohnbaptistchurch.org. Go ahead and sign up for that, man. It's going to be a magnificent event. Reverend Ricky Harvey, our youth pastor. Graduate Celebration Weekend, drive through at the church to recognize all high school and college uh, graduates on Saturday, July the 8th from 1030 to 1130 a.m. What a magnificent time that's going to be. Um, I ask you to do this, though. If you're planning to attend, I want you to RSVP. I want you to text to SJBC2020 at 84576. That's the way we can get an idea of who's coming. And that, that information is on our website too. But I just want you to let us know that you're coming so we can celebrate you. And then the very next day on the Sunday service on July the 12th, it's going to feature a nice graduation component in our worship service. I can't wait to celebrate you. Go ahead and don't forget the RSVP. Mid-year congregation meeting will be held virtually on July the 18th, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. I also want you to go to our website. And I want you to go to our Eventbrite section of the website and sign up for this meeting. This way, after you sign up, once we'll give you a Zoom uh, contact information, contact literature, contact something. I, you know, the Zoom thing is still kind of new to me, but you, you'll get a, a confirmation Zoom um, so you can type it in and you can join us virtually for our congregational meeting, July 18th, 10 a.m. to 12. And lastly, the virtual self-care workshop that's going to be held on July the 21st from 7 to 8 p.m. The topic is faith over fear. Good googly moogly. Well, I've been waiting to say that to you for a long time. Faith over fear. Shanika McClarty is our, is our speaker. Registration for that is also on our website. Please go to our website. Check out our website for any other information that you might need to get. Don't forget, if you need anything, call the church. We're all way from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Somebody's always there to answer the phone if you need anything. We love you. Thank you. See ya. Hey family, it's time now for us to worship the Lord in our giving. Listen, we are so blessed at St. John that we give in a house where our worship impacts the world. Many of you are already aware of the strong St. John Baptist Church food pantry. In the month of June alone, we blessed over 200 families with more than 15,000 pounds of food. Wow, it's amazing what God can do when we as God's people honor the Lord faithfully in our tithes and in our offerings. And we invite you to continue to give faithfully because God has so much more work that God wants to accomplish in the world. And I just believe that God can use our giving to be a blessing to the world. Another great way that God is blessing us to be a blessing and to impact the world through our worship in giving, St. John will disperse more than $50,000 in scholarships to college students for the 2020-2021 school year and it is because of the giving of God's people. Listen, it's not magic, it's not hocus pocus, it's because the saints, you, you give faithfully and we appreciate you. Thank you for the way you bless God through God's church and we invite you today to continue to partner with what God is doing through this local church at St. John. So much ministry is happening and available to us and it happens because we give faithfully. I'm inviting somebody who has been hoarding what you have during this pandemic. I invite you to trust God. Many of you, we're concerned along with you as you've been furloughed and your resources have been diminished because of COVID-19. We believe in God with you by faith that God is going to provide for you and your family. There is no guilt, no shame that you cannot give what you do not have. 
but we who are still blessed to be able to honor God faithfully in our gifts, if I were you, I would put some seed in the ground so that there will be a harvest when we need it the most. Listen, but there are four ways that we give here at St. John. That's eight, just four. Four ways that we give here at St. John Baptist Church. You can text to give. You can go to our website and click the giving button. You can do it directly through your banking institution. Or we've noticed many of you are still giving by mailing your gifts to the church. And you're very much so welcome to continue doing that. But I want to pray now that the Lord will bless our gifts and not just our gifts, but that he would anoint our worship and giving so that we can continue to impact the world. Let's pray together and ask God's blessings on our gifts. God in heaven, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, that our giving is not in vain. But God, as we bless you in giving faithfully to your church, God, I thank you now that we are being a blessing to the world. It's one thing for one of us to do it. But when we all come together and bless you as a collective unit, as a congregation, giving to your church, Lord, we are blessed to see how you've been a blessing through the way we bless you. Bless every tithe and offering. Let no person suffer out of stepping out of faith and obeying you with these gifts. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
but you I don't wanna love nobody but you I don't wanna love nobody Love nobody but you I don't wanna love nobody but you I don't wanna love nobody but you I don't wanna love nobody Love nobody but you What time is it? What time is it? It's preaching time. It's preaching time. Oh my goodness gracious. And what an opportunity for us to listen to one of the magnificent men of God, our pastor, our senior pastor, Reverend Robert mm -hmm. Anthony Franklin Turner. We ask right now that you pray for him right now. Pray for him right now as God has given him a word to give us that it may dive deeply down into our spirits, into our souls, as, as we go about our business, go about our different ways, that, that seed that he is going to plant today will erupt and we'll be a better people one to another. That's what he, he's bringing us a word, some charges, some advice, some direction to go out and be better people, the people that God has called us to be. So right now, get ready for our senior pastor, the Reverend Robert Anthony Franklin Turner, to give us the word. Preach, Pastor. Preach.
Our scripture for this, our Youth Sunday, can be found in the New Testament book of Matthew, the 21st chapter, and I'm going to be reading verses 28 through 32. Hear these words from the Word of God. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered, but later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he didn't go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you didn't believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did, and even after you saw this, you didn't repent and believe him. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the applying of this, his holy and most righteous word. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, if you will, we ask that you might let the very words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts to be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Let all the people of the Lord Say amen. <clears throat> Church, for a few moments today, we just want to hang these words on the hinges of your mind, a different kind of child, a different kind of child. Church, I think that it's amazing that one set of parents can have two children and the two children can be nothing alike. They can be raised in the same house. Uh, they can have the same last name. They can have eaten at the same table. They can be the same gender. They uh, could have lived under the same set of rules. They could have been born within minutes of each other. But at the same time, amazingly enough, uh, they can almost be nothing alike because one can be short and the other can be tall. One can be serious and the other can be silly. One can be an academic and the other can be athletic. One can be a Democrat and the other can be a Republican and both can be in the same family under the same roof and yet be nothing alike. Um, I'm just trying to tell you, church, I'm just trying to tell you that it's amazing that the same set of parents can give birth to two children and the two children in the same family can be nothing alike. And it's just not amazing today, church, but, but it's been amazing for centuries because even in the Bible days, we find Sets of children born to the same parents, but they're nothing alike. Because right at the beginning of humanity, you've got Cain and Abel, and Cain 
was a murderer and Abel was a worshiper. Uh, you, you've got Jacob and Esau and Jacob was a domestic and Esau was a rustic. You, you've got Mary and Martha. And Martha was somebody who stood on her feet all day. And Mary was somebody who sat at the feet of Jesus all night. Church, I'm just trying to tell you that it doesn't matter whether you look in the past or whether you point to the present. It's just amazing that one set of parents can give birth to two children and those two children can be nothing alike. Well, when I think about this amazement, when I think about this amazement today, I can't help but think about our text for today. Because in Matthew chapter 21, while Jesus was teaching one day, he said, a certain man had two sons. And the father went to the first son and said, now I want you to go into the vineyard and work today. And the first son said, no, I'm not going to do it. But then he changed his mind. The Bible says that he repented and he went to the vineyard. And then the, the father said to the second son, son, I want you to go into the vineyard to work today. And the second son said, yeah, dad, no problem. I'm on it. I'm on it, dad. I got you. I got you. But he never did what he said. And so Jesus then asked the religious leaders of the church a question that day. He said, which one of those children did the will of his father? And they all said the first child, the first child, that's the one that did the will of his father. And then Jesus says, well, <clears throat> y'all are like the second son who who said he was going to do it, but he didn't do what he said. And Jesus said to the leaders of the church that day, he said, well, the promiscuous and the publicans are going to get into the kingdom of God before you, because even though they didn't say yes in the beginning, <clears throat> they repented and they said yes after a while. Now, now, church, if we're going to be honest, if we're going to be honest, we'd have to admit today that as children of God and as young people in the church, many of us are just like that second child because we've got good intentions. We've got good intentions, but something always keeps coming up. Now, now church, I don't believe that this second child, <clears throat> I don't believe that this second child was bad. And I don't believe that this second child had any evil intentions. I just think that when he said, I'll go into the vineyard, he meant what he said. But the only problem was something came up. And I just wonder, is there anybody here who's ever had a situation where God asked you to do something and you were intending to do it, but something came up. Have you ever promised God that you were going to do something that he asked you to do, but before you could do it, something came up? Maybe you said, God, I'm going to worship you on Sunday, every Sunday online, on time. But by the time Sunday rolled around, something came up. Maybe you said that I'm going to start to tithe to the church, but by the time your paycheck was deposited into your checking account, something came up. Maybe you said, God, I'm going to start to serve you in a ministry. But when the day came for that ministry meeting or when it came time to serve, something came up. Church, it's not like this child was trying to lie but somehow he allowed his priorities and somehow he allowed his situation and somehow he allowed his circumstance to get ahead of God and whether he meant it or not and whether or not he had good intentions in the end, he didn't follow through because something came up. Is there anybody here who knows what it's like for something to come up? And so today, church, Jesus, 
Jesus is saying to young folk in the church, <clears throat> and he's saying to children of God all around the world that he is looking for a different kind of child today. Because he's looking for a child who, who will end up where the first child ended up. Now, now notice, notice, church, that I said where the first child ended up. Because the first child started out saying, forget about it. And when he said, forget about it, and when he said that I'm not going to the vineyard to work today, he was in good company because there have been a whole lot of people in history and there have been a whole lot of people in this world today that God has asked to serve, that God has asked to do something, that God has asked to go somewhere but their first reaction that came out of their mouth was, forget about it. Because God asked Jonah, God asked Jonah to go down to Nineveh to preach his word. And Jonah didn't just think, forget about it, but Jonah got on a ship going in the opposite direction. Uh, God asked Moses to go down to Egypt one day and to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. But Moses said, forget about it. I'm not good at talking and I've got a murmur. I've got a stammering tongue and I've got a record down there. So Moses' first response to God was, forget about it. But is there anybody here that's glad that God doesn't hold your first response against you? Because many times our first response has been, it's too hard. Many times our first response has been, it's going to take too long. Many times our first response has been, I'm too tired. Many times our first response has been to ask somebody else. But I'm so glad that God will stay right where he is and he'll come back to you a second time or a third time or a fourth time until you give him the right response. Somebody ought to give God some praise today because God will give you another chance and another chance chance and another chance to do what he asked you to do. Would you high five your neighbor real quick and tell your neighbor, neighbor, you ought to thank God today for another chance. And so, and so, the first reaction that this first child had was forget about it. But then his second reaction was he thought about it. Church folk don't know him to shout. I said, I said his first reaction was forget about it. But his second reaction was he thought about it. Because the first child told his father, I'm not trying to go out in that vineyard to work today. And so he walked away. But while he left and while he walked away, while he was walking, he thought about it. And church, watch, watch what he thought about. First of all, he thought about the vineyard because he said, you know one thing, I benefit from that vineyard. So why am I going to say to myself that I'm not going to work in that vineyard when I benefit from that vineyard? Because <clears throat> he benefited from the great that came from that vineyard. He benefited from the wine that came from that vineyard. He benefited from the jelly that came from the grapes from that vineyard. He benefited from the money that came from the sale of the grapes, from the jelly, and from the wine that came from that vineyard. And while he was sleeping, he realized that that house he was sleeping in was paid for by the work that went on in that vineyard. And so this first son said to himself, you mean to tell me that you're not going to work in a vineyard that you're benefiting from every day? And so church, I believe that this son changed his mind because he thought about that vineyard. But then I believe he, he not only changed his mind because he thought about that vineyard, 
I believe that he changed his mind also because he thought about his father. <clears throat> he thought about his father because initially he told his father no. He, he said he wasn't going to work in the vineyard today because after he, he had some of the stuff he wanted to do. He told his father no because he thought he had something better to do. He told his father no because he thought he had something more important to do. But while he was walking away, he thought about his father because he said to himself, he said to himself, my father has been good to me. My father has provided for me. My father has taken care of me. My father has taught me. My father has loved me. My father has led me. My father has listened to me. My father has raised me. My father has done his best for me. And after all he thought about, he decided to do something about what his father had asked him to do because he thought about his father. And so church, the next time your heavenly father asks you to do something in the church, next time your heavenly father asks you to do something to help somebody else before you tell God no. Just think about your heavenly father because every now and then you ought to think about how your heavenly father woke you up this morning. You ought to think about how he started you on your way. You ought to think about how he put food on your table. You ought to think about how he put clothes on your back. You ought to think about how he brought you from a mighty long way. You ought to think about how he saved your soul. You ought to think about how he made you whole. You ought to think about how he blessed your life. You ought to think about how he opened doors that no man can close. You ought to think about how he sport the peace to your storm. You ought to think about how he helped you to climb up the rough side of your mountain. You you ought to think about how he turned your life around. And so church, before you say no to God the next time, just think about your heavenly father. Because the old folks used to say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. So every now and then, you ought to stop thinking about yourself. And you ought to start to think about your father. And when you think about your father, you ought to praise his holy name. When you think about your father, you ought to say he's worthy to be praised. When you think about your father, you ought to bless up his holy name. When you think about your father, <clears throat> you ought to lift up holy hands. When you think about your father, you ought to give God some praise because if he blessed you before, and if he forgave you before, and if he healed you before, and if he delivered you before, and if he brought you out before, and if he answered your prayer before, he can do it again. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? If you believe it, say yeah. If you know it, say yeah. If you're glad about it, then let's give God the glory. And let's give God the honor. And let's give God the praise. And say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Praise God for God's word that was preached to us today. Thank you for that strong word, Reverend Turner. And just before we go, we want to extend an invitation to you who may be viewing and you feel a sort of pull or tug from the Holy Spirit in your heart. And you may not know what to do with that, but if you leave this life and never give God your heart, it would be no different than you driving by a gym and never going in and participating in the process. That's what we're inviting you to do in faith today is participate in the process of your transformation. God wants to change you. God wants to elevate your life. God wants to give you a new life in him and he can do it right now. Listen, if you never accepted Jesus Christ, would you pray this simple prayer with me? Repeat after me and we believe God's going to transform your life beginning today. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I confess that you are the Lord and the leader of my life. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and I accept and receive eternal salvation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Family, if you just prayed that prayer based on the word of God, you are saved. It's a process. You may not be able to do it all right now. None of us can. None of us are perfect, but I believe that God has saved you today. Listen, there's a link in the chat section. Listen, click that link or go to our website, stjohnbaptistchurch.org. Click the Join Our Church link and give us a little information. Our team is going to contact you this week and we're going to let you know that we're praying with you and we're going to walk you through the process to be a part of our fellowship. Listen, we're a virtual congregation these days, but we're a strong spiritual fellowship. We're growing in the faith and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, if you don't have a church home, you may already be saved. You say, listen, these folks, they're getting it the way I want it. Listen, join our church. Go to that same link on the website. And we'll be happy to welcome you into the family. Church family, y'all know how we do. Drop it in the comment section. Let's welcome them to the family of God, to the family of St. John. Thank God for what God is doing in your life. It's prayer time. It's the time to lift up praise to God for who he is in our lives and a time to bring our cares and concerns to him. The word says that we should cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. Now, if you have any prayer requests that you would like to have uh, prayed over during the week by our prayer ministry team, make sure you put them in the comment section and uh, we will take care of it and make sure that they get to that team. Now, would you bow your heads with me as we go to the throne of mercy? Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, we come first just acknowledging who you are in our lives and we say thank you. We thank you for your presence in our lives, the promise that you said that you never leave nor forsake us, dear Heavenly Father. We just thank you knowing that no matter what we are going through, you are with us. We thank you for the gift of this day and we thank you for this opportunity to gather together to, in this worshiping community to, to worship you. We thank you for the message that we heard, dear Heavenly Father. I pray that it will be something that we will be able to reflect on during the week and be able to allow it to infuse us in our spirits so that we can live lives that are pleasing to you. Now, Lord, we come lifting up those who are in need. We lift up our sick. We lift up our shut-in, Lord. We know that you are truly a healing God. You are Jehovah Rapha. So we lift them up to you knowing that you are always on the case. We lift up those who are going through hard times and not knowing what their finances are. We know that you are Jehovah Jireh. So Lord, we know that even when we don't see how we're going to make it, you enable us to make it from day to day. And we say thank you. And then Lord, we lift up those who are grieving, who've lost loved ones. We pray that uh, the comfort that they receive from you will enable them to move day by day from mourning to joy because we know that you are truly the great comforter. And now, Lord, as we continue to go through so much uncertainty in our days with COVID-19, uh, with uh, how long we're going to have to do social distancing and how long we're going to be away from one another, you are the one that gives us the ability to be able to have that peace in the midst of this storm. So, Lord, we look to you for a peace that truly surpasses all understanding. But, Lord, all that COVID has done, this tiny microorganism that has kind of taken a scab off of the flagrant injustices that have always been here with us, dear Heavenly Father, I pray that we stand firm, first of all, in 
in your word and in prayer with you for to be guided in how you want us to proceed. I know there's some righteous indignation, which there should be because of all that's going on. But Lord, help us not to get weary. Help us to keep moving forward to understand what it is you would have each of us to do because there's something for all of us to do to be able to tear down these structural injustices that have been with us for so long. And Lord, we just claim it in the name of Jesus right now that we know that we have the victory with you. So Lord, we just thank you, we praise you, and we lift up this prayer in the name of Jesus. Jesus who is the center of our joy. Jesus is the one from who all good and perfect things come. Jesus who is the hope for all that we do and will ever do. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. This has been an awesome Youth Sunday worship, ex worship experience. Thank you, production team. Thank you, singers. Thank you, worship participants. Thank you, members and guests. And thank you, viewers, for joining us for worship today. I especially want to thank you for supporting us with your financial gifts, because the more you give to the church, the more we're able to give as a church. Now, as we get ready to depart, let me leave you with some parting words. As you go through life, decide to do something that has eternal consequences. God bless you. Have a great week and see you next Sunday.